Hi, I'm Dan Q, and this is the vlog version of my blog post length extension attack demonstration, in which I'll be demonstrating the, an SHA-1 length extension attack against an imaginary website. Obviously, what I'm telling you here is how to break into particular kinds of websites, but I'm not telling you how to do so, so that you should go away and do that. Instead, what I'm interested in doing is helping you to think like an attacker so that you can make better defensive choices about the web applications that you yourself write. I'm a firm believer in the attack first methodology to security training, and so people should, in my opinion, learn how to attack applications so that they can learn how to be better defenders. Let's have a look at the, my test scenario. Here's my imaginary website. It's called Images R Us and it's a stock photo website. We've got a license for one of the images, an image called Free here, uh, which you can see because you can click the download link to get it. Brilliant. We can't access the valuable image. We're not paying that much for it. Looking at the URL for the free image, we can see, you'll see that it passes the, the variable download is equal to free. That's the name of the file we want to get. It also passes a key, which is being used to secure it. From the length of the key, we can determine that it's an SHA-1 hash. We might experimentally try changing it from download equals free to download equals valuable, but we will hit a 403 error and the message you need to purchase this image before you can download it. Clearly on the server somewhere, there's a, a, a hash happening, which involves a salt that we don't know, the parameters we're passing in, and uh, it's coming out with this hash that we were given. But we're only given valid hashes for the products we've actually been allowed to download. You see this paradigm used in all kinds of places, anti-hotlinking scripts, um, serial number validation, both on and off the web. If you'd like to imagine what's on the server, there'll be some source code that probably looks a little bit like this. Uh, there's a function for generating valid hashes. What it does is it uses a secret key stored in a constant that we don't know. It concatenates that with the parameters from the URL and it runs it through SHA-1. To generate a valid key when making links to the images, all the server needs to do is run that function and pass in the parameters that it wants protected. In this case, download equals free. To check if a key is valid, all the server has to do is remove the key parameter from the query string uh, and then pass the remaining parameters into the get download key for function to get a valid hash for those parameters and then compare the hash that was provided by the user to the hash that was valid for those parameters. What we're doing, as we said, is taking a secret key and some parameters Running, uh, concatenating them, running them through SHA-1 to get this secret hash. And the magic of a hash is that if any small thing changes in those input parameters, even a single character, we get a completely different hash. If we open it up, what SHA-1 does is takes the data, it cuts it up into chunks. SHA-1's chunks are 64 bytes long, and the final chunk gets padded to make them all the same length. Then, for each chunk, it runs through a function. That function takes two parameters. One of the parameters is the block itself that is being uh, um, hashed. The second parameter is an initialization vector. The initialization vector for the first block is defined in SHA-1. For subsequent blocks though, the initialization vector is the output of the function running on the previous block. So, the second block's initialization vector is the output of hashing the first block. The third block's initialization vector is the output of hashing the second block, and so on. The final block is padded. That padding consists of a one bit, then lots of zero bits, all the way through to the end, except for the last eight bytes, which contains a binary representation of the number of bits that are actually data in that block before the padding started. If we were hashing the string, this is my data, exclamation mark, that fits into a single block. Uh, it gets padded. The this is my data, exclamation mark, is 16 bytes. 
So he gets padded with another 40 bytes and then uh, a footer, effectively, that says how many bytes of that were data, 16 bytes of it. Knowing that, we could craft another block that hashes to the exact same output. That block would be a block whose data was the words, this is my data, exclamation mark, followed by the same bits that would have been added if it were the final block and it were therefore padded. These two blocks hash to exactly the same output, given the same initialization vector. Let's have a quick talk about parameter overrides. Images of Us is written in PHP, and PHP, like many server-side scripting languages, has a particular way of handling input variables that are duplicated. If we were to pass one is foo, two is bar, one is baz, what PHP and most other server-side scripting languages do is they override the value uh, one with baz. What we're going to try to do is pad the existing value, knowing what that will output as the um, initialization vector for our new block, and put our ampersand download equals valuable into the new block, which we can then generate a hash for. Let's see how that looks. Here's our existing blocks. This is what's happening on the server. Yeah? There's a secret key, which we don't know, and then there's our message, download equals free, and then there's padding, and then there's um, the length of the data. And that all gets run through the algorithm, and that's where the genuine valid hash comes from. So we need to extend the string, so we're passing download equals free, followed by an appropriate number of padding bits. The right number depends, of course, on how far through the block we already are, which depends on the secret key, which we don't know, which is why you know, some trial and error may be needed. But we'll pad the rest of the block, and then we'll provide more data, which we know will fall into the next block now. Now, the first block will still hash to the same value because what's in it is the same as if sh one had padded it. Uh, it's just that that padding is now actual data. And our new block we can calculate the hash for. We can calculate the hash because we know what we put in our new block and we know the initialization vector because it's the output of the complete hash from the previous block. All we have to do is hash our in injected content ampersand download equals valuable but using a different initialization vector than one would normally use and then we get the new hash. Let's try doing that for real. I'm going to be using a tool called Hash Extender it's one of many tools that can do this, or you could even moderately easily write your own. Uh, Hash Extender comes with um, all of the source code that I've linked above, so you can just give it a go by checking out my code and running a command like this. I'm running Hash Extender. I'm giving it the format of the hash, the data that uh, I know is being injected already, download equals free, the length of the secret that's being prepended to that. I do know the length of the secret because I wrote it, but if you didn't, this is where you begin your trial and error. The known valid signature that was output from that, the information I would like to append after my padding, and the format you'd like it output in. Format HTML is probably most useful for doing this kind of attack, though it does have some caveats we'll come to in a moment. Pretty much instantaneously gives us a new string to inject um, instead of the existing download equals free, uh, and a new signature that results from concatenating this extra block on and running the hash with the new initialization vector. If you look at the new string, you'll see it actually says download equals free, followed by a lot of padding bytes, which we'll talk about in a second, followed by my ampersand download equals valuable. Those padding bytes are um, a one followed by lots of zeros, which is why we get character 80, followed by lots of character zeros, being the null byte, because the next ones are all eight zeros, and eventually finishing with E8, which is a hexadecimal representation of the number of bits in the data part of the block, that is, the 16 presumed bytes in the secret, followed by the 13 bytes of the valid string download equals free. That padding on the end of download equals free pushes what comes next into the next block. And what comes next is, of course, ampersand download equals valuable. The result of hashing that new block 
with the um, in, uh, initialization vector we got from before gives us this new signature. Now this actually has made a bit of a mess. You'll see these percent three Ds, they should be equal signs and this percent 26 should be an ampersand. Hash extended is a little bit of over encoding, but if you know it's there, you can work around it. Uh, I'm really more only interested in the padding bits from this string. So I'm gonna take that padding and I'm going to um, inject it right there. Um, and then I want my ampersand download equals valuable. So I'm going to type onto the end of that ampersand download equals valuable. And then finally, I'm going to replace the key with the newly calculated key. And when I press enter, hopefully, I've stolen the valuable image. That's essentially all there is to the attack. You end up with these horrendous looking URLs and you can see how it works. Um, the block which contains download equals free has all of these padding characters to fill up the rest of the block and push us into the next block. And then the next block contains ampersand download equals valuable. And we can work out the hash for that last block using the initialization vector from the previous block which we were given in order to um, uh, get a valid hash. This simple example used a valid string that was only in a single block and an um, injected string that was only in a second block. But the same principle works for any number of blocks and the tools that will do it for you will just do it. Now, if that's a little scary, it's probably because you've written code that would be vulnerable to an attack like this. I know I have. How do you defend against it? Well, the essential part of it is that you should be using a HMAC. Uh, HMAX are your friend here. Let me repair this code into something better. Uh, if I go uh, in PHP, um, hash HMAC uh, SH, uh, SHA1, uh, passing in the URL decode params there and my secret key. I should go one step further though, and rather than using triple equals to compare the known valid key to the one that the user provided, which is vulnerable to timing attacks. Um, I ought to be using uh, a function for that purpose called uh, hash equals. Um, hash equals can be given the um, expected key. That has to go first and the user provided key second. Um, and I now have a secure implementation. There's so much more to learn and talk about, about um, length extension attacks. And if you do want to follow any of the links around the place, you'll find more of the things that I've written, lots of great things other people have written, and lots of opportunities to test things out. But for now, I'd recommend that you check out the code that I've just been playing with and give it a go for yourself. Because the best way to truly understand all of these things is to try to exploit them. I'm Dan Q, and I've been talking about SHA1 length extension attacks with a demonstration. Please look around, find a link to the original blog post. It's probably better.